Mm. That's the time mm. wali kuja kat break yeah, that bad news mm. um wakati wali to conference room mm -hmm. and then they told us your kids life will never be the same again. You know, it's been since she stopped breathing, paka wali intubate it was like almost 30 minutes. Mm. So obviously the oxygen did not go to the brain and it affected her mm. severely. It was mm. like severe brain damage. Mm. Yeah. That must have been hard. It to very hear. hard. Mm. So I could talk and I crawl. I couldn't even walk. I could talk and I could talk. I could talk and I could talk. I remember at that time I could talk. So the same one talk when the sujiti nine one one actually unafanya ni ni apa ko inyomba. Me I moved on kitambol. Fe kuka ko inyomba. So the same one talk when the. So at that time ko kwa floor nambia please just call nine one one. Akakujia ka bang mlango yake kana bosi ni sumbwe. Hello and a warm welcome to Tuko Talks. My name is Lynn Gugi. Now, my guest today married her best friend of 14 years, hoping for a happily ever after. But four years later, he wants nothing to do with her or their child who is abled differently. She is also here to demystify the myth that America is a land of milk and honey. And just because someone takes you there does not mean they want the best for you. And so without further ado, Please allow me to let her introduce herself. Mami, how are you? How are you this morning? I'm very fine. Thank yes. you for having me. Karibu sana. Yes. yes. Please introduce yourself. Um, my name is Ruth yeah. Omari. Yeah. I'm a mom of one child who is almost five years. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm really happy to be a mom. Yes. I come from the US mm -hmm. in Minnesota. Yeah. And um, that's why I live. I just came here to visit mm -hmm. and um, attend my uh, sister's uh, wedding. Okay. Yes. Welcome. How is how how Kenya una yona adi? Kenya. Yeah. Kenya Simba. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to be with my family. Yeah. Um, the only problem is cash. <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm happy to be with my family. Yeah. Yes. It's a great feeling to be back. And home. then I have at least I have that break. Yeah. Yes. Okay. From my normal stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Na kama kawaida hapa tuko talks tuna match. Me. <laughs> <laughs> can Sinjana, we, I can see that. Can that we did not tell each other? No, what? we did not tell each other. Yeah. Mimi nimekona nikashanga like wow. So this is ordained. This is ordained. Sindio? Yes. Uh, so, um when when you wrote to me you said Lynn, I want to share my story. Yeah. Because you told me sometimes the people we think that we know the people we think we know are not you know they completely turn out to be different people yeah, yeah it will take us through your story um okay my story is long but i try to cut it short okay um i was married in 2014 mm -hmm. i was married with uh, to my best friend who i've known for like 14 years let, let me say yeah 14 years mm -hmm. And I went to the U.S. and um, after one year, yeah. I got a kid who is a, a girl mm -hmm. called uh, Raylin. Mm -hmm. And um, after like six months, actually before we travel, actually the day she got sick is the day we were supposed, the following day we were supposed to travel to Kenya to oh. come and visit the family. Mm -hmm. But that day, specific day, she got cardiac arrest. Mm -hmm and she couldn't breathe for like 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. And that's where um, everything started mm -hmm. uh, about her health. Mm. Yeah. Okay, and let's go back to the best friend. How did you meet this best friend and how was like life like for you growing up? We met in Italy, yeah. where I used to live while growing up. Uh -huh. um, and he came there, alikuwa na biashara. Malalikwanafanya, mm. so that's where we met because okay. where the business was is where we used to live. Mm. So he used to come home sometime for lunch, kukunywa maji, mm. and all that, mm. but we knew each other for a long time. Mm -hmm. But we were just friends, mm. normal friends. Yeah. yeah. What kind of person was he to an extent you guys now decided, hey, we are best friends? 
I mean, he was a nice person. Yeah. When we were friends, mm -hmm. he was a nice person. We could talk, we could share a lot. Secrets, he could tell me his secret, I mm -hmm. could tell him my secret. Mm -hmm. So he was that confident mm -hmm. at that point, oh, yes. Okay. But we were just friends. Yeah. Yes. So you felt safe whenever you were around him. You could tell him anything. Yeah, I could tell him anything. Yeah. Yeah, but we had different relationships at that point, mm -hmm. but we were just friends. Okay. Yeah. So how did it uh, reach a point that you guys decided, let's try dating, and who approached who? I mean, I can say in 2010, mm -hmm. uh, 2010, 2011, yeah. I think 2010, he approached me. Uh, for relationship but mm. I mean for me it was hard because I was looking at him as a best friend yeah. then I was like moving from a best friend to a romantic relationship it wasn't that easy for mm -hmm. me which mm -hmm. he really uh, um, uh, respected at yeah. that time mm -hmm. and then he moved on and then uh, three years later he came back and then I was like okay let me give it a shot mm -hmm. yes and that's how it started mm -hmm. then Three months down the line, I think six months down the line, that's when I joined him in the U.S. In the U.S. Yeah. Okay, so there's this part here where you're in Kenya and you are dating him. So was he working in the U.S. or how was the relationship? Oh, like? he was working in the U.S. Oh. Well, I was in Kenya okay. and I was working in Kenya too. Oh. So you guys were doing long distance relationships? Yes, we were doing long. Uh, it wasn't hard yeah. because we, were, we used to talk every single day. Mm -hmm. We used to video call, so it was not hard. Mm -hmm. No. Okay. Yeah. And you guys, you planned your wedding here in Kenya or in the U.S.? In the U.S. Yeah. Yes, in oh. the U.S. Okay. So yeah. you joined him in the U.S. after I joined six? In the, I joined him in the U.S. Yeah. Then after like less than three months, we got married there. Oh, it was just like an intimate ceremony because my family is not there. Mm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And before he took you to the U.S., were you working here in Kenya? Did you quit your life to go to the yeah, U.S.? Yeah, I was working. I was going to school at yeah. the same time. Mm -hmm. So I had to quit everything and, you know, join him in the U.S. I had to stop school. Actually, the day I left, I was supposed to do my exams, which I did not. Wow. And I had to travel. Mm. And I had to quit everything, my job, and join him mm -hmm. yeah. in the U.S. Yes. What were your family members saying? I mean, <laughs> this, actually, me going to the U.S. was really, it happened really fast. Yeah. Most people, even my friends, my extended family, when you know, like, hey, because mm -hmm. my process was really quick. Yeah. And um, it took like three months for me to go to the U.S., which for some people take a long time. For mm -hmm. me, it was easy. Mm. And my family was supportive, but they were like, ah, oh, that's too quick. My dad, of course, that was the only worry, but he knew him. Mm. Yeah. And um, did you really want to settle down with him? Were there no doubts like, did he give you a reason to think that this is a completely different person? No, I didn't doubt because he was my best friend yeah. and we didn't have any issues. Mm. The only issue that I was worried about is like, if this doesn't go well, then we're going to be maybe the worst enemies mm -hmm. and the relationship, friendship relationship is going to be ruined. Mm. But for me, I was like, you know, people say get married to your best friend and I thought it was all going to be. Um, easy because of the tribe mm. of the religion but yeah so it i didn't have any doubts at that point okay yeah did you not feel like this is my wedding i need my family around me i did uh, but it couldn't happen in that short period of time mm -hmm. because we only had like three months to get married yeah so that could not happen and that's why we did we did just a small ceremony mm -hmm. it wasn't like a wedding yeah yeah we just went to church to Kaumbewa. We went for uh, dinner with our friends, and that's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm assuming you left your life behind, yes. school, everything, yes. and you decided, let me go to the U.S. Yeah. What role was he playing? Was he going to take you back to school, or what was the agreement? Obviously, I was going to continue with my life. Nothing mm -hmm. was supposed to stop. Mm. I remember even my dad told <laughs> told him, you know, she helps me a lot. So I hope 
nothing stops mm -hmm. arudi shule and everything yende mm -hmm. yeah that that was like the agreement mm. yeah then what happened <laughs> So when I got there, actually, everything was okay. Yeah. I wasn't working for um, a while, but not long time. But I wasn't working mm. because, you know, you have to um, uh, get the documents and all that before you start working. Mm. So after I, go, I started working, I wanted to go to school immediately. And for him, it was like, okay, let me go to school first and you'll go to school later mm -hmm. but you know it was easy i think for me at that at that moment i miss you when i doubt anything you mm -hmm. know like when you have someone napanga vitu as a family and yes. you want to implement those things mm -hmm. as a family mm -hmm. so i am when you pay two time ni malize first and then we when the full time mm -hmm. okay much i need to lie kwanza yeah but then as time went by uh, I realized no, I'm really wasting time. Mm -hmm. apply Konda Shule. Mm. I remember at the first time, I, it didn't happen. The second time, I got to apply, I could apply. So I can say, but I'm not money in the Shule. So I mean, I can have cool mm. back off. Mm. So it went through. It, it went. Um, I think it took time then could you realize like I'm really like seriously wasting time because mm. why could you guys not go to school at the same time for him I like wanna say ma watch in the shule full time a punguze kwenda kazi mini ko kazi mifanye kazi so ya ki maliza araka Na mini punguze shule, mm. na ya rudi uh, mm. kazi full time. Mm. Which to me actually it made sense. Because mm -hmm. some people do that, I've seen it and it's working for them. Okay. But it didn't work for me, mm. apparently. Mm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So it was more like he did not want you to be empowered or? At the end of the day, that's what I realized. Yeah. And that's when I started to apply by force. Mm. Now things started being hard on my side because mm -hmm. I gave Lisa like Bono na ngana kunda shule so ni makambu ngoje ni malize amu na pata antoka naenda shule like it's four hours, three, four hours drive mm. and then that, like the whole weekend at that point ni likuwa ni me I was pregnant already kuja ni kapata mtoto so me ni kahav kuka kwa nyumba mm. ya kienda because mm. the moment I'm talking, I mean that talking ended ni achi wapi mtoto. Mm -hmm. So me I had to stay back mm. and let him just go. Okay. Yeah. Was he abusive physically or emotionally? No, he was not abusive physically. Mm. No, he was not. Emotionally? A little bit, I can say yes mm. because I felt like I couldn't get what I wanted. I felt like my life was wasted. I felt like. Everything has changed. When I was here in Kenya, I know what to do. Niamke, niende kazi at 3 p.m. Niende class. So now I'm disoriented. I can't go anywhere. I can't do anything. I cannot drive or go anywhere. So they look out to Konyuba 24/7. Yeah. And then now you gave birth to your baby. Now I gave birth to my baby. And then everything now changed. I had to stay home most of the time um, then after three months I stayed home for like I think two two months mm -hmm. then I went back to work mm. then after the baby was like six months when she got sick I stopped working completely mm. yes I just decided to take care of her because I didn't want anybody else to take care of her because mm -hmm. up to now nobody has ever taken care of her apart from me mm. yeah she's five now she's almost five okay yes take us through uh, her condition take us through so um what happened mm. I don't know actually she was not sick she was born normal everything was okay actually I tell you I could crawl could struggle to crawl but I just don't know what happened. I've never gotten the answer, but when she was six months, 
I remember this specific day we were planning, um, I was planning to go to my dentist. Then I came to the dentist and I So I came to the dentist I came to the dentist and I choke. And then I collapse. So I came to the floor. I was doing CPR. At the same time, I'm trying to call 911. Mm. At this point, I realized th it was different because I was going to pass out before. Mm -hmm. But this one was different. The color turned immediately. Mm. So I kind of got dark. Kabisa. But within four minutes, the emergency came in, mm. the 911 came in, and I was trying to. Make oxygen. They tried all they could, but mm. they, it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. And that's the time she was rushed to the hospital. Mm. Um, and we got there like after 15, 20 minutes mm. to Africa Hospital. Wakam mm. shock because she was not breathing at all. She was not responding. She was not responding. Mm. She, to me, she was actually, actually, they even mentioned mm. she's dead. So I mean, like, like, how come she's dead? Like, alikuwa sawa, amelala, amiamuka vizuri, like, from nowhere you're telling mm. me she's dead. Mm. I didn't even have the answer. Mm. So we rushed her to the hospital, mm. wakam chukua. There were so many people in the room. Mm -hmm. Wakam chukua, wakam shock. Yeah. The first time, nothing happened. And you know, she was six months, she was really tiny. Wakam shock the first time. I am shocked the second time. Then they were like, no, she's, she's not responding. Mm. She's not responding. Mm. So, um, na kumbuka bab me actually, I think I was confused at that moment because uh, tomorrow I'm supposed to travel to Kenya. Now she's sick. So, I was shocked the second time. They can't do it anymore because mm. she's young. Mm. I begged them. They did it the third time. It didn't happen. I was going to the codes. No, we can't, we can't do it. She's, she's very young. She's not responding. I'm sorry. She's dead. Eh, hey. Say, you mean you like, what do you mean she's dead? I'm even going to call my family. She's now dead. And I remember I begged the doctor, Nikambia, please, for the last time. If she doesn't respond, I will accept and move on. Yeah. So I said, well, you know, we are not supposed to do it. I, I like Nimdogo, I was mm. to keep shock all the time. I think they, I, if I can remember well, they even gave me something to sign. Kusema, Mindo Nime, Nime Sema, I'm shocked the fourth time. Mm. So they were like, okay, I cover Kotiake back. Well, I'm shocked the fourth time. It didn't happen. So I said, I'm sorry. And all that, they're trying you know, to tell me um, they can't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. Then when we gave up, and I was like crying. Mm -hmm. your time, like I was just crying and crying. I'd crying, but back I look at the room in Guinea, but just close to the room, the emergency room. Then the beep it can turn on. I can't just claim to me give up. The beep it can turn on. So, it, but when I come on the airport, it was very light, mm. very light, mm. and that's the time they said we need to intubate her. Mm. So I can make a uh, tube go through the mouth, mm. the open lungs, so I'm so they could breathe. Mm. And you know, that's that's what happened. Then after that, to come we go to the waiting room at the uh, ICU to Mgoje. We waited for like four hours. Mm. And that's the time we mm. could to break that bad news. We went to the conference room, mm -hmm. and then they told us your kid's life will never be the same again. You know, it's been since she stopped breathing. It was like almost 30 minutes. Mm. So obviously the oxygen did not go to the brain. And 
it affected her mm. severely. It was mm. like severe brain damage. Mm. Yeah. That must have been hard. It very hear. hard. Very hard and now we had to call the airline, we had to cancel everything. Mm. Yeah, it was not easy and that's when my life changed mm. completely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How did her condition affect your marriage? After the baby got sick, um, when she got to two years, mm -hmm. of course the things were hard, there were some things going on which I don't want to mention. Mm -hmm. Things were very hard. So for me, at some point, I felt like um, things were not working out. I was trying so much to save my marriage, but it did not happen. Mm -hmm. And at some point, you know, I got frustrated. I, I said, you know, I, I'm, I'm just going to move to the next room because it was, it was really bad. Mm -hmm. And I moved to the next room. I continued taking care of the baby. I still didn't go to work. I was there. So um, one day, one thing that really made me feel like I'm, I don't want to be in this marriage anymore, one of the things is one day I got sick. Because at some point I got um, depressed so bad. And I, I, I think I was just overwhelmed. I couldn't sleep the whole night. And when I was driving from the mall, my body was just not right. Then I said, okay, let me just go through uh, the emergency room and see mm. what's going on. Mm. So I went to the emergency room, they checked, and I go for like three hours, four hours, I can take IVs. So I can be in the konyumba, upumzike. You need a lot of rest. I can konyumba, I can drive. Kakwanyumba, uh, feel like I apana. My like, I was like literally feeling my body is wearing out. Like I was just feeling come and pass out. Mm -hmm. So the baby and her dad were at the next room. So I talk and ke crawl, chini, cause I couldn't even walk. Nika fungo mlango, nika mambia. I was like, I'm going to go to the hospital. I'm going to go to the hospital. I remember at that time, I was like, I'm going to go to the hospital. I'm going to go to the hospital. Actually, I'm going to go to the hospital. 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 So, at that time, I was like, I'm going to go to the hospital. Please just call 911. So at that point, I was on floor. Wow. At that time, I was on the floor. 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 This is your former best friend. Yes. I was on the floor. 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 I was not able to talk or walk, but I could hear everything. Mm. So I can be a copyright information. I can be like, um, I go to the floor. I'm a sema, she's not okay. Mm. So after like four minutes, they came in. I can be a soon say they could be a at the watch at Umpeleke, Kwa Gari, a Kakata, Kakata Kasima, Nimezambeba. So, walikuwa wengi anyways, wakanibeba, wakanipeleka kwa gari tukaenda hospitali. Then when I got there, so ndo wakanipatia madawa, wakaneka tuna kwa IV. I was there for like, um, I think two days, mm -hmm. nilikuwa emergency room, mm -hmm. or a day and a half. Mm -hmm. So, usiku, it was like 11 p.m., they brought me back. They brought me back uh, from the hospital. Mm -hmm. Uh, the driver told me, ni, ni knock first, I make sure ni mingia kwa nyumba, mm. ndiyo aende. Mm. So ni knock, ni knock, ni knock for like 15 minutes, kakuja kanifungulia. Kafungua mlangu wakapanda siya za kaniacha hapo chini. Siyata siti, siti mbe vizuri. Nimepatua 10 days bed rest. Yo 10 days bed rest, nimepewa, 
kufika kwa nyumba kufika upstairs kaingia my room kaingia nikalala nimepoa madawa mingi nikamwezi madawa you have to eat or to take them on an empty stomach mimi nikaamka nikalala asubuhi i woke up like 8 am in the morning ah na sema mtoto wangu wako wapi mm. kuangalia mtoto napata akotu hapo akitanda peke yake kwa sababu she can't move mm babake ayuko amenda job na kuniambia amenda kazi so she, he just woke up and left you know hata kuuliza hospitali umeambiwa nini like how are you feeling what's going on didn't ask me uh, any of those questions simi nikachukua mtoto nikaenda kumpatia madawa medication uh, like food because now she is feeding through the tubes mm. It's even hard to move because the more I move the more I feel na kwa mgonjwa zaidi. Niki rest na sikia I'm getting better. That day Kaisha then the second day that day he didn't come home. Mm. The second day he didn't come home. I remember that second day mchana I was so hungry sijakula. Niko tu kwa nyumba peke yangu I'm like hey, let me call my friend nasema hapana saki kusumbua mtu yote cuz nyumba yetu ni nyumba iko juu na chini so nilikuwa mm. na stairs mm. so na, na crawl kwa stairs mm. nikikaa 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 mpaka naenda kitchen that day i was feeling like i really am going to die kwa sababu sikuli ugonjwa imenizidi nikakumbuka nikaenda kitchen nikachukua viazi moja kubwa mm nikakavo kwa floor nikaikata i didn't even wash it uzuri ilikuwa ile viazi ya white ile mm. safi mm. i didn't even wash it kaekelea kwa sufuria nikafungulia maji nikarusha chumvi nikaekelea kwa kwa stove juu so vile ile ichemka hata sikushughulika na viazi nikachukua hiyo maji nikakunywa cuz nilikuwa nasikia like i'm passing half na nilikuwa namtoto kwa nyumba mm. and i remember mm. that is the day nili end up says sayo nimekelea mtoto kwa floor na mimi nalala kwa floor cuz siezi panda kwa bed na siezi mbeba mm -hmm. so we are sleeping kwa floor sisi wote wawili so nikam i remember that day nikachukua mtoto nikambeba i really cried nikasema eh god kama unanipenda usingoje tende ziishe nipe tu nguvu peke yake i'm just asking for strength and nothing else i'll do the rest depend to yongo peke yake ana kumbuka mtu akaenda kulala ikafika asubuhi ikafika asubuhi nikasikia kama niko na nguvu hata nilikuwa natembea hiyo point mm. and that is the day nikasema um out and done because wakati alikuja the third day hata kuuliza mtu wako aje alikuja anakigia kwa room akalala hata kuja kuangalia mtoto mm. he didn't care mm. then I'm like eh hey, hata uwezi uliza unapotea 3 days and make kwa bed rest how do you want me to survive with the baby so someone nita kwenda siwende hata unafanya nini hapa mimi i moved on you ulisema nita kwenda so anza kujipanga and that's the day I was like okay and i stayed there for few months then i moved out and i started my life mm. yeah god when he said he had moved on was he seen someone else i don't know mm. if he was telling me because he was bitter but i knew he was bitter because i was leaving the marriage mm. but there was other reasons yenye liko nafanya nitoke but I, i don't know if he had really someone else mm. amelikuwa tu kuniambia mm. yeah i says it you are but then me i i moved out i got a house yeah. and i started my life did he not follow the kid no at that time bado alikuwa anachukua mtoto kidogo mm. kidogo but me i had the baby most of the time mm -hmm. so maybe at amchukua weekend mm. uh, some weekends akai na eh yeah okay were you working or how did you manage to make a living no i was not working yeah. so uh, what happened mm. is um, the good thing with the us the, when the baby was two years they started p 
paying me instead of paying somebody else. Okay, good. So I'm being paid to take care of, of her. the baby. Yes. Wow. Which it was easier mm. for me. So I said, okay, come on, I have income and I can sustain myself and mm. my life and her life. Mm. Then, because I don't have to go to struggle and go out to work. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'm assuming even if you are divorced, people would ask for joint custody. So yeah. why sole custody? So what happened is mm. after I moved out to the new house, but we were just sharing the baby. Uh, it was like almost 7.30. Mm. Um, every other weekend we were rotating. Weekends, weekend maybe one day in a week. Mm -hmm. So we were helping each other. Yeah. But at that point, Alikwana insists. Um, Alikwana kujia kwangu na chikuwa mtoto. Na minenda na mpelekea mtoto. Ama na mpelekea mtoto. So either way. Mm. So Alikuja kwa like, umetua bi pesa umenunua carpet. Ume ikitu umenunua pesa ngapi. Nene na kununulia. Kwa nuko na boyfriend. Mm. So it was really hitting him hard. I'm moving on without asking any help, mm. no child support, no mm -hmm. No nothing. I was mm. doing everything mm. by myself. Mm. But I think after I realized for real, and in a file divorce, it can hit hard. So that's where the real bitterness is. And at some point, Actually, I realized <coughs> it's when I was talking to his friend. Yeah. His friend, I was like, you know, to Mongia na ye, and I am like, and I cannot survive, mm. and that's the point I can be. I am to 100%. percent does not want anything to do with the baby. But the point was, I cannot to end the which, uh, of course, it's hard. Then I just should now because I have the baby 100%. And I think to him, it was more of Kunitesa. Yeah. I'm not familiar, but I'm not familiar. 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 I'm You know? So it was more of Kunitesa. I'm not familiar. I'm not familiar. I'm not yeah. Do you think he will regret making that decision, telling you to take a hundred percent responsibility for the baby? I don't know if he will regret because sana. Mm sana. He doesn't care about anyone apart from himself. I don't think he's going to regret. Mm. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you regret marrying him? I do regret marrying him. I don't regret getting the baby, but I do regret because that was actually my first fear. Mm. That if it doesn't work, it was the worst mm. of enemies. But that was never my plan. Let's assume we made a mistake. We, are we were supposed to be friends, but we took it to the next level. Mm. If you decide to move on and marry somebody else, mm. tell her to mm. Aina shida. Because mm. we were okay at after to me separate. Angi kujia kwangu, uh, kwa nyumba, upate maybe ni mepika nenda kazi. Ata nge mpatia food if I have extra, like kan mepika mingi. Mm. Chukua food and anapaka nda na job. Like we were okay. Mm. The only problem is me moving on uh, without him. Mm. That was the problem. Now, because I feel like you need to do what uh, I'm telling you, not what you think is right for you. Does that happen a lot in America when someone takes you there? They think they have control over you? I know like six people who have complained of the same because I think, uh, like for me, even with my dad, mm. sometimes. Uh, unapata, but my dad is uh, on a condition. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when I put a comgonjwa, nikimtumia pesa adawa, it's it's a problem. When you namtumia pesa adawa, when you come onge kuapa, nene onge mtumia. Unana, if we f do a joint, uh, we file taxes together. Unapata it's a problem. Uta file taxes pamoja, but uta ona pesa majizimenda. Ukiulizo na sema 
si mimi ndio niko kazi kwani lazima nikwambie mhm mm investment kifanywa unatumia pesa zenu nyinyi watu wawili but you are not told where the money is going mm -hmm. ni kama it's like you don't have a right unaona unaambua nichukulie pesa fulani even now we had like the same problem nichukulie pesa fulani uh, nifanye project ukichachukulia mtu pesa then would you pay me that pay project make kwa jina ya mtu mwingine so that you don't claim it but die i think mm. he knew what he was doing yes. because your pesa yote tumekuwa tukitumia kwa taxes pesa mm. yote tumekuwa tukifanyia kazi ama tukisave mm. ndio kwa project nyingine which is not even under his name so ukienda ku claim na mbwa tayko kwa jina anasema mimi sina any property mm. but it's not under his name mm. so it's like ukipelekwa some of them wanna feel like uh, they are entitled you are their property they need to tell you what to do you have to do what they tell you no fake kukata hata career they want to choose for you career so ni kama basically it's like you don't have a right mm. so there are many women when you wakisikia mtu anakuita America ama your hubby is in America i don't have anything against America but they will gladly rush wengi sana hata wengine mpaka sema wananiambia they want to go it's okay I mean there's opportunities for sure mm -hmm. kazi ziko utakosa kazi mm -hmm. you cannot unless you are careless you you will always need to take care of yourself you will the only problem is um I, but the good thing with america nile mm -hmm. uh, was it you can't just be as abusive and get away with it mm -hmm. yeah i there think that's that's the consequences thing. yes there are there are sometimes you kugonga tu hivyo ngumi wezi no to decide ukae unyamaze mm. but huyo mtu ata survive mm -hmm. yes okay yeah how is life now for me i can say it's a blessing kwa sababu tangu ni move out i've seen more and more and more at a miss i can't even explain but i think kuna vile one thing i know and i know for sure and i even tell other moms mm. Kuna sababu Mungu alikupatia huyu mtoto. There's a reason why alinichoose. Okay, I used to ask myself until a year ago. I used to cry every single day. Jua na ndo hospital, they make it always go to the hospital. Ni mgonjwa ICU, ICU, surgery after surgery after surgery. But there's a reason why God alikuchoose. There's a reason why I choose him to specifically and for me one thing that gives me hope I know my my baby died I know that and there's a reason why Mungu alimrudisha back So kama Mungu alimru angetaka kumchukua angemchukua that moment So for God kumrudisha back alikuwa anajua anafanya nini and one thing I know for sure ile watu wanakuanga na fia nayo achia tu Mungu mtoto. Mimi I said, we Mungu mtoni wako. Ukiamua kumchukua ndio utamchukua. Mm -hmm. Ukiamua kumweka, <coughs> make sure she doesn't suffer. Mm -hmm. Akuwe na roof, akuwe na chakula, akuwe na comfortable life, akuwe na all equipments, akuwe na medications because all that's all that she needs. Mm -hmm. And all this extra stuff inamfanya kuwe happy. Mm -hmm. Acha tu Mungu mtoto. Mm -hmm. Si wako ni mwa kwa sababu you, you can't. It's not easy. Mm -hmm. But for me I feel malinilifika nikaachia Mungu life ilianza kukua easy for me. So you stay with her 24/7? I stay with her 24/7. And who is taking care of her now? Right now mm. ako na babake. Mm. Uh, so when we were going through the divorce the judge alisema ah, since i don't have a family waliongea na lawyer my attorney since i don't have a family in, in the, the us, US. Uh -huh. at least i need like three weeks every year a kind of toto and a party break mm -hmm. and that's what happened okay yeah so now when you get three weeks at least so because the law has uh told him to do it um, yeah yeah because the law has told him to do it okay yeah so when i get back mm back to my normal routine again yes wait for three other weeks yes what keeps you going ruby it's not easy my family and her smile she smiles 
a lot. Mm. He loves a lot. So me, mostly is my family. I talk to my family a lot. And um, cause I don't go out because I have like few friends. So, but mostly it's her mm. and my family. Mm -hmm. Now I think for me, I happiness for getting this. I won't cry anymore. Because mm. I was crying every single time. I come gonjo nalia, nikim feed nalia, nikim pay medication. I'm crying. I was just miserable. I was getting uh, panic attacks. I was depressed. I was depressed for a long time. Ata watu akujua, watu na sema. Stoki kwa nyumba. Some people feel like at unaringa, utaki kongia na watu. I was told that a lot in the US, but people never understood why I'm doing that. Jini mm. kwa nyumba sometimes for the whole week. Sijafungua tele mlango. Mtoke tu kwa balcony, nikai na mtoto, sikuishe, tulale, tuamke, and that's it. Mm. And that's why nilifika mahali, and I said, I want to do, um, uh, to do something different. Mm. I want to, I can now sit here and talk about my story. I can talk about her conditions. Mm -hmm. I was not able, actually most of the people, the water juice is what happened. Mm -hmm. They have never known what happened to my kid. Mm -hmm. I've never shared her story mm -hmm. until recently I shared on my YouTube and, you know, and deal with other kids who have the same uh, mm -hmm. condition. Yes. Okay. What would you want your daughter to know about her mom? I will never give up on her. Lovely. I will never, it doesn't matter if I'm um, where, I will never give up on her. I mm. sacrificed, because I was never paid. Nilikuwa naka kwa nyumba without salary. I never cared about money. Mi tule kuna kosawa, that was all mm. that I wanted. Mm. So for me, I will never um, give up on her. And I hope all those moms are on our total. If you are a single mom, if you are um, in a family setup, and if you have families, mm -hmm. uh, or, or those extended families when you're on nephew, nieces, some people feel like our total nikases. Nisha ona, nimenda nimeona, as I told you, nisha ona mtu anasema, a uh, uyu mtoto ni kasi kwa hibo oma yetu. Si umpeleke uko, mtuwe hapa zikwe, mm. atoke kwa nini, mm. analita kasi. Mm. They are not curses. It is not their wish. Mm. If they could be asked, Raylin, what do you want? Mm. Ata kumbia mam, I want to go out and play. Mm -hmm. I want to go to school. I want to talk. I want to do what? They can't. So the only thing that they need is mm. love, a lot of touch, and these small things that you know that are, those kids are not curses. Mm. The only thing I can tell moms, mostly, don't give up on your kid. Kuna sababu mungu alikupatia. Society might give up on you, your family might give up on you, your partner might give up on you, even your parents might give up on you. But never give up on your kid, because mm. they are she or he has you and akutegemea mm. wewe mm. if you give up on that kid hakuna mtu anaweza mchunga mm. no one even yeah. if you pay someone they yeah. will never take care of that kid the way you will mm. yeah when it comes to marrying your best friend marrying your best friend <laughs> marry at your own risk <laughs> marry, marry your at, your, best friend at, at your, your own, own risk. risk at your own risk yeah uh, that one me I can that say to me doesn't work. Let me ask. I know this is a silly question, but the comparison when he's a best friend and a husband, what are some of the comparisons? Some is or similarities. Ama hakuna anything after mesha kuwa best friend akikuwa husband kuisha. I think the thing <coughs> is mm. we ignore a lot. When we were best friends, unajua mm amkosani. -hmm. Muna kutana, muna cheka, muna piana story, what happened, maybe with the relationship, maybe na yake, muna unge, ama anything, I'm concerned, mm. so everything is okay. But what we normally ignore, <coughs> when we see them with other people, working mm -hmm. on relationship, mm. tunonanga easy red, mark, uh, red flags, mm -hmm. but sees it like, ah, ni beshti yangu, 
so I could body. Mm -hmm. But then I don't know why we feel like when we are in relationship with them, ours is going to be different. Because mm -hmm. whatever happened to me, mm. happened to the relationship that he had in the past. I saw everything. But maybe Leon, ah, me and Rafiango, we are going to be fine. No. So we ignore those things. We ignore those things. Because the temper part, it was really bad. Mm. But we feel like this is a quote of our Because we're yeah. best friend. Yeah. So marry at your own risk. Marry at your own risk. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work. I yeah. don't know. To me, it doesn't. Because you can still meet someone in a month. You can meet someone anywhere and they can be your best friend and they can respect you mm. and they can never you know, disappoint you. Mm. And you can know someone for ages and they will still disappoint you. They will still disappoint you. Yeah. To pay tips course Chanawetu, especially mm. the ones going to the US. The land of milk and honey. Kwanza US ni land of milk and honey. I mean, it's not that bad, yeah. but come on to an end apart. I mean, the only thing I say, I mean, I mm. late because I was like, ready to settle down. <coughs> I was ready to get married because I was like 26 at that time. So I felt like I was ready to start a family. But ukifika pale, kama mtako sana mtu because of school, that is a red flag. Because obviously, we mtu ataki wandeli. And I've seen that mostly in the US. Ndi mwana watu wana kosana. Kuna pata watu wana kosana, wana separate, Yes, I've seen that mm. all the time. Siju, maybe someone gets threatened when a pata pesa mingi and then umwache. I'm on a toka inje sana. Me, I wasn't, I, I, I never used to go out. Ata niki drive, nda drive, maybe nifike mall, nirudi, siku wanaenda mbali. It's now after that, nilianza, ata ku drive, peki yangu kuenda mbali. Mm. But if someone decides to go there, I can decide as he lose focus. Make sure Ubejua could drive fast. Make sure you know your ways out. Make sure how to usike to ngoja kila mtu akufanyie everything. Mm. Me I, I was like that na kana ngoja ni processi way sijui me processi waje sijui me fanyo waje. So nafanywa kila kitu. Involve yourself in the process. Involve yourself in the process. Do mm. I process na sema nini? Do una sign nini? Just know everything. Mm. Yes. Okay. Yes. Wow. Anyways, I think I think you are such an amazing person, Thank and you. you are strong. Thank and you. I know obviously there are some of the things you can't disclose on the show. Mm. But if someone is at a place where you are, where you are like, should I leave this man or should I stay? What would you tell them? Me, okay, as I say, it's not easy when you are by yourself. Really, it's not. Mm -hmm. But mentally you have to be okay yourself you can't handle any more stress uyu mtoto sense many stress but mm -hmm. emotionally they drain you mm -hmm. you don't need any more because sababu kikufa utachia nani mtoto wako yes unasumbuliwa na mzee unasumbuliwa na familia unasumbuliwa na uh, mtoto hata mm. mwenyewe utakufa or mm. will commit suicide mm. so you have to make sure emotionally ko mm. if something you can handle well if something you cannot handle mm. then let it go let it go let it go let it go at yeah. Mungu. yeah you also spoke of having a youtube channel what's the name and what content are you putting there yeah my youtube channel is i am ruby andrew yes and it has a picture of me and my baby. Okay. So my plan is what I've been trying to do. I want to go out and reach more families mm -hmm. who have kids with cerebral palsy. Mm -hmm. And I've talked to a few people here and yeah. in Kisi. Yeah. And some people in the US. Mm -hmm. So the thing I've realized is I've seen some families struggling. Unapata, somebody doesn't even have, because I asked, they told me, Therapy one session is like 200 bob. So some people cannot afford $2 to take their kid for therapies. Mm. Me, I don't pay for any therapy. Mm. Even taking my kid to the hospital, I can decide to drive her or I can say to, I can say to, call, to call a car and mm. you know, take the baby to the hospital. Mm. We have all this leisure. Mm. 
things. So my channel, I want to help mostly people here in Kenya specifically mm. so that this family cannot, it's not easy. It's not, the most important thing they need is the therapy. Yes. Because what to talk on a cerebral palsy, uh, their muscles are stiff. So they need to move their muscles mm. for them to, to actually, if they don't move their muscles, wana kwanga a lot of pain. Mm -hmm. Medication is not cheap. It's mm. very expensive. Mm. Therapies, uh, checkups. Yeah. So for me, I want to try as much as I can to help families because some people are already, are already interested. Yes. So at a mtuwa kituma takama ni hundred dollars, I may say dear family mingi sana for therapy. Mm. So I have a channel called I am Ruby Andrew. Okay. And on Instagram, mm. I am Ruby Andrew. Ruby Andrew. Yes. Do you have an email address just in case? My email address is omariruth at gmail.com. Okay. Yes. All right. And now what would be your parting shot to our audience? The only thing I can say to um, the audience, I hope, actually, one day, it's not easy to take care of kids who have conditions. I've seen, um, there's a mom, I've seen families, mbaka unapeleka mtoto wako kwa birthday party, unaka, una, some parents wana sema, ustiaze na ule mtoto, tuwa mtoto wako hapa, ana distract. It is not their wish. These kids are not cursed. Actually, mungu wana wapenda even more. Mm. Ana tutuwa mungu. They don't have a choice. They didn't choose to be like that. That's the way they were born. When gine iliwakuta through the, uh, the journey, Let's love them. Ukiwapata tu wewe wapende. Touch them, usiogope, show them love. Because the moment unawashika, the smile they will give you, that's all that you need. Well, just love them and uh, support these families that uh, are going through these challenges because mm. it's not easy. Mm. Yes, support them. Yes, support them. Yes. And thank you so much for coming. Thank we you. wish you a safe trip uh, back to the US. Thank and you. we hope when you come back, uh, you will always come and check and yes. check, uh, you know, even give us a progress. Yes. And I know the future is brighter. Mm -hmm. And obviously, you've inspired so many people. And I hope someone at home has been touched by your story. And I would urge you to continue being thank brave you. and being strong. Thank you don't you. know who was waiting for a voice to speak uh, so that they can also get the little strength uh, yeah. to also love their kids. Yes. We've done stories where kids have been called curses, yes. where someone abandoned their kids because of their condition. Yeah. But now when they see someone like you coming out and speaking and being a voice of reason for so many people, it's really admirable. So thank you so much. Thank you, and Lee. I hope we keep in touch. And thank you also for choosing to share your story thank with you for me. Having me. Karibu sana. Yeah. And guys, I hope you are touched by this episode. Let me know what you think and what other inspirational or positive topics that you would like us to tackle here on Tuko Talks. As always, a huge thank you to the man behind the camera, the legendary Edwin Ochieng, Anacheka Tuwa Ponyuma, and our amazing editors, David Muredi, Yukabeth Mukami, and Chebet, for always making sure these episodes come to you right on time. If you want to share your story with me, my email is pinned on that comment section. Ama, our editors will put it here. Feel free to email me a well-detailed brief of your story. And if it's something we can share here on the show, I'll definitely consider it. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Lynn Kugi. See you next time.